Salt, the ancient symbol of spiritual warfare and purity. In this documentary, we'll uncover the profound role that salt plays as a symbol of spiritual conflict and purification. Our mission is to present this ancient concept clearly and accessibly so you can fully comprehend the impact of salt in your spiritual practices. Did you know there are three main ways to harness salt to dispel curses and invite blessings into your life? Why did Jesus describe his followers as the salt of the earth? Stay with us to discover the remarkable insights about salt as a spiritual tool. To begin with, we must recognize a fundamental principle. All creation comes from God, exists for His purposes, and is made through His power. This includes salt, which was created by God with a specific intention. Every grain of salt, every drop of water, and every spark of fire originates from His divine will. Salt's significance is intertwined with the very essence of creation. In the Genesis account, we learn that God created the heavens and the earth from the very start. As a natural mineral, salt was part of this divine creation. Often overlooked, salt is endowed with divine authority, just like plants, animals, and elements. Consider fire and water. Fire consumes while water nurtures. Similarly, salt enhances and preserves. Each element serves a purpose in God's grand design. Just as salt keeps food fresh, doesn't it also sustain our faith during challenging times? Reflect on your personal experiences. If you've used salt in your spiritual practices, share your stories in the comments. Many people find encouragement in learning from others' experiences. For example, one individual experienced a significant change in her life after using salt in her spiritual routines. Have you encountered the power of salt in your prayers? Share your journey and how God has worked through this humble yet potent mineral. Historically, salt was revered for its extraordinary properties. It preserved food, added flavor, and even functioned as currency in ancient Rome. Officials were paid in salt, leading to the term salary. Jesus often used parables to convey deeper truths, but not all teachings are symbolic. While oil, bread, and wine hold sacred meanings in the Christian faith, why do we readily accept the significance of oil but question the power of salt? Some view salt as linked to malevolent practices, but this is a misunderstanding propagated by the adversary. Recall John 10.10, 10, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. The enemy seeks to obscure the truth about salt's spiritual and physical importance, Consider the use of anointing oil in the Bible. It was used in the Old Testament to sanctify the high priest, the tabernacle, and its furnishings, signifying holiness. However, the Jews were prohibited from using anointing oil for personal use, as stated in Exodus 30. The power resided not in the specific ingredients, myrrh, cinnamon, and others, but in the act of following God's command. If God directs you to use oil, do so. Likewise, salt, like oil, has a sacred role when employed according to divine guidance. Matthew 5.13 tells us, You are the salt of the earth. Let us not let the enemy obscure this truth. Anointing with oil appears a few times in the New Testament, but salt is a recurring symbol throughout the Bible, representing covenant, purification, and judgment. God employs physical elements to reflect spiritual realities and achieve His purposes. Consider the example of Moses' staff. When God asked Moses, What is that in your hand? Moses replied, A staff. God instructed him to throw it on the ground, and it became a serpent. Prophets used everyday items like water, salt, oil, and staffs in their ministries, not as objects of worship, but as instruments for prophetic actions. These elements could become mere rituals if used without intention. But when applied in faith and obedience to God, they hold power. All we've discussed comes directly from biblical texts. The adversary is a deceiver who attempts to distort what God has created. Some cultures link salt with misfortune or sorcery, believing it can be used to cast spells.
Ignoring these practices overlooks the reality of evil in the world. The enemy seeks to corrupt God's creations for his own purposes. In Matthew 4, Satan tempted Jesus by offering him the kingdoms of the world, trying to deceive him with stolen authority. Through disobedience, humanity forfeited the authority granted by God, allowing Satan to seize control. Are we aware of how the adversary attempts to pervert the sacred? Do we use the tools God has given us with reverence and purpose? As Ephesians 6.12 states, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The Bible illustrates that God and his prophets were among the first to use salt after its creation. The narrative of Sodom and Gomorrah serves as a notable example. Lot's wife was transformed into a pillar of salt as a consequence of her disobedience. Salt was used by God, not by Satan, to enforce justice. In Leviticus 2, God commands that all grain offerings be seasoned with salt, symbolizing purity. Salt also represents an everlasting covenant, as seen in 2 Chronicles 13.5. The Lord, the God of Israel, has given the kingdom over to David and his descendants by a covenant of salt forever. We've identified three key spiritual attributes of salt, purification, covenant, establishment, and cursing. These aspects highlight the profound and divine purpose of this mineral. So why do practitioners of dark arts use salt in their rituals? They recognize its spiritual significance. The enemy has tried to convince Christians that salt is a tool of evil, but today we reclaim the truth. If Christians have ceased using it, it is due to deception. Today is the time to rediscover the truth. Earlier we saw how Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt in relation to the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. In Deuteronomy 29.23, Salt and sulfur symbolize a land under a curse, preventing growth. Salt, along with sulfur, can bring destruction. Sorcerers use salt because they understand its spiritual power, but Christians need not fear. As God's children, we possess the authority to dismantle curses and counteract witchcraft. Zephaniah 2.9 says, Moab shall be like Sodom, and the children of Ammon like Gomorrah a field of nettles and a pit of salt, and a perpetual desolation. The Moabites and Ammonites, descendants of Lot, emerged from acts of immorality and became adversaries of Israel. Sexual immorality curses future generations. If your family faces challenges like failed marriages or abuse, ancestral immoral acts might be the root cause. To break these curses, pray, and use salt as a means of purification. Salt is unique in the Bible as an element used both for blessing and cursing. It is a weapon bestowed upon God's children, but the enemy has attempted to turn it against us. Do not be afraid. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Salt features in both cursing and blessing contexts throughout the Bible. Psalm 107.34 declares, He turned rivers into a desert, flowing springs into thirsty ground, and fruitful land into a salt waste because of the wickedness of those who lived there. Salt can render fertile land barren as a sign of judgment. While Christians rarely use salt for cursing, it's crucial to understand when to employ it as a spiritual weapon and when to use it for peace. Salt is a powerful tool in spiritual conflict, granted to us by God to wield with faith and obedience. An army's role is to defend a nation, ready to act when invaders threaten. It remains vigilant, even outside active combat, always prepared for battle. In spiritual conflict, however, the enemy is already encroaching on Christian territory, and salt must be used to repel these forces. Consecrate the salt to God and scatter it throughout your home, neighborhood, and city. Let us pray with authority. 
My Father, God of Israel, today I take the covenant salt and spread it across my city, home, neighborhood, and church. I nullify all works of the enemy, all witchcraft, and all idolatry. I break every pact made by sorcerers and witches over this city and declare an ultimatum. If they do not repent, they will fall under the mighty hand of the living God. I bind the strong man in the name of Jesus and every spirit of vengeance that seeks to come against me and mine. From this day forward, wickedness shall never rise again in this city. In the name of Jesus, let it be written, let it be done. Salt wields immense power. Elisha, a prophet endowed with a double portion of the Spirit, went to the source of the waters, added salt, and proclaimed, Thus says the Lord, I have purified these waters. No longer will death or barrenness come from them. This verse underscores the role of salt in purification rituals of the Old Testament. Consider money. It passes through many hands before reaching the altar as an offering or tithe. It might have been handled by thieves, murderers, or sorcerers. The salt dedicated to God serves as a purification tool for the money you bring to the altar. If you wish to consecrate salt to God, handle it with reverence and dedication. Set aside a whole package exclusively for God's service, using it solely to honor Him. Similarly, choose a new container specifically for this purpose. This principle applies to oil as well. Some churches, when receiving tithes and offerings, sprinkle salt on them and pray for purification, as outlined in Leviticus. While not all churches practice this prophetic act, some believers understand the importance of purity in their offerings. Thus they cleanse their tithes with consecrated salt before presenting them. Numbers 18.19 states, All the heave offerings of the holy things that the children of Israel offer unto the Lord I have given unto thee and to thy sons and to thy daughters with thee by a statute forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord unto thee and to thy seed with thee. This everlasting covenant of salt is still valid for those who honor God. Though initially for the Israelites, we, as believers grafted into the same family, are included in this perpetual covenant. Salt's preservative nature symbolizes durability, loyalty, and eternity, making it a fitting emblem of a covenant. In Eastern traditions, salt represents the stability and permanence of friendship. A bond was often sealed by sharing a meal seasoned with salt, symbolizing commitment to loyalty and fidelity. This tradition continues today, emphasizing the deep significance of salt in maintaining relationships and covenants. Consider the story of an American historian who, while researching in the Middle East, found himself in danger as night fell. Seeking refuge, he approached a tent, fearing it might belong to thieves. He requested shelter for the night. Despite the thief's warning of potential danger, the historian proposed a salt covenant. The thief agreed, shared a meal, and honored the covenant by protecting the historian and escorting him safely to the city the next day. The thief recognized the seriousness of a salt covenant and honored it with utmost respect. Salt covenants are mutual agreements requiring commitment and faithfulness. They remain as relevant today as in ancient times, binding parties in a steadfast bond of trust and loyalty. Final summary. Salt has long served as a powerful symbol of warfare and purification, representing the eternal covenant between God and His people. It has the capacity to purify, bless, curse, and establish covenants, and must be handled with respect and devotion. Salt can break generational curses, purify offerings, and safeguard consecrated places from malevolent forces. However, like the bronze serpent in Numbers 21, which was eventually destroyed due to its idolization, salt should not be worshipped as an object. It is a tool to demonstrate God's authority and should be used with faith and dedication to Him. Remember, a Christian is a warrior in spiritual conflict, faithful to God under all circumstances. 
live with divine purpose, and use God's tools with intention to receive his favor.